Say knowledge, understanding, revelation, and determination is the key to my change. Say knowledge, understanding, revelation, and determination is the key to my blessing. Say we are a teaching ministry. Say if I am taught. The word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, we are a teaching ministry. Say, if I allow myself to be susceptible to the word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, if I'm not taught the word of God, My life will remain the same. Look at somebody, make eye contact with them and tell them, say, let's get this word. Let's get this word. Let's get this word. Let's get this word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we are starting a a new series today. And uh, this is our first day of summer heat. Uh, hyped, exciting, anointed teaching where we focus on uh, our soul winning campaign. Uh, Not so much membership, but putting emphasis on winning people's souls back to Christ. And uh, uh, this uh, realigns all of our focus to do what God has so called us to do. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, and so on and so forth. And another scripture, going to the hedges and highways uh, to bid them and compel them to come into the church. And so it, it aligns all of our thinking because this is summertime. Summertime. Uh, the enemy doesn't take vacations, even though we're known to take our vacations during the summertime. But the enemy doesn't take vacations. Uh, so summertime is when, when the weather uh, gets to the point where um, people generally choose to take things off instead of putting things on. Summertime. And so this is summer heat where this summer we want to help. We want to help. Hey Amen. Y'all, y'all having concert? Hey Amen. <laughs> we want to we wanna help you to take off that which... Uh, that you need to take off spiritually and uh, put on that what you need to uh, put, put on spiritually. Amen. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Just, there we go. So, uh, we're starting a series. Uh, and I wonder why God uh, had me wrestle with the subject for a moment until he made it very clear on this weekend. Uh, I thought that we would be dealing with no more soul ties. But the more and more I meditated and studied this thing, uh, and God allowed me to uh, go just a little deeper regarding soul ties, uh, the series is now penned knowing your soul tie. Knowing your soul tie. Um, Listen, amazingly enough, The phrase, soul ties, if you will, uh, it uh, can't be found in Scripture. We say it, people are reading books, they say it in church, sermons are entitled soul ties, um, but it cannot be found. The actual phrase, soul ties, uh, you won't find that in Scripture. Now, however... Uh, Though not found in scripture, the very phrase soul ties uh, describes a very powerful truth, a very powerful truth that runs throughout the scripture. So the phrase soul ties is not found in scripture, but the truth pertaining to soul ties 
runs throughout the scripture. Y'all with me? Okay. So, uh, so consider this, if you will. You can hang a ceiling fixture in the same room as nice carpet. And they share, literally share the same space for perhaps years. Or let me back up. Days, months, years. And the fact of the matter is they will never interact nor uh, will they be bound with one another. That light up there and this carpet, they can be in this space for the life of them hanging and laying and they will never interact and never be bound with one another. Okay, okay. Why? Okay. Because they're not designed to. They're not designed to. Okay, I need to help set, set this up so you can see it. So let me give you something else. How many of you are wearing some sort of uh, ring or necklace? Raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Okay, let me put something on your street that you can, you can, you can, uh, you can embrace. Listen, you can take that same necklace or ring and wear the same shoes that you have on now on the same body uh, for years, perhaps. And the two items, the necklace, the ring, the shoes, will never uh, interact or be bound together. You ask the question why? Thank you for asking. Because they're not designed to. Now, we, however, all of us in here are different. Say, tell me more, Pastor. Okay, I will. I'm glad y'all asked. As spiritual beings with a soul living in a body, uh, as spiritual beings with a soul living in a body, guess what? We are designed to interact. And to bond. As a matter of fact, the more we interact and the more we bond together, the closer we become. Y'all with me? Okay, okay. So, so, so now, first of all, when I said we're designed to, number one, we are designed uh, to be bound and interact with our maker that's number one or first of all secondly or number two uh we are designed to bond together and interact with one another can you imagine uh life without any interaction of someone who can talk to you who can listen to you uh, who can have uh, dialogue with you. Now, I know some of you like to do all the talking. You probably prefer monologue for a season, meaning you're the only one talking. But there comes a time in life where you really need to be quiet and let them talk. Or else you become, what's that one movie uh, where the guy plane crashed and there was no other humans cast away? So you, it, it was proven that you can try to imagine all you want. It's just not going to be as fulfilling as another person. You can draw a happy face on them, a sad face. You can kick them around. It's just not the same. So we were designed to be bound and to interact with one another, okay? Tell your neighbor, he has my attention now. He has my attention. Okay, well, well, well. Why is this, Pastor? Good question. Glad you asked. Because God created us for fellowship. Yeah. He created us for fellowship. Yeah. He did not create us to uh, live a life where we're all by ourselves. It's just not even a happy life. 
Imagine having a phone with no contacts. You wouldn't even need a phone. Why would you need a phone? You don't know nobody. You don't want to talk to nobody. Just, I mean, just, just imagine that. So, so, so to the, he created us for fellowship to the extent that Scripture describes us as being capable of being knit together or tied together. Say, wow. Okay, y'all with me. Okay, you don't believe me, so let me give you some scripture. Look at Judges chapter 20, verse 11. And I think I'm going to go out of King James Version. Judges chapter 20, verse 11. Yeah. Now, look at what it says. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city. Now look at this after the comma. Knit together as one man. Y'all see that knit? Tied together, knit together as one man. Okay. Uh, So, Pastor, what about close friends? Give me 1 Samuel 18 and 1. 1 Samuel 18 and 1. I got to show you a few because I think for so long we looked at this soul tie one-sided. And I need to open up your eyes uh, to see some other things. Okay? It's 1 Samuel 18 and 1. It says, And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan. Y'all see that? was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Y'all see that, right? Now, we all know that those of us that read God's word and study God's word, this, this wasn't no funny business right here. These, these, these guys were very straight. Uh, now, uh, well, Pastor, what about what about somebody you don't even know? Say a stranger. Good question. Glad you asked. First Chronicles 12 and 17. I, I, I got to show you something here. How easy it is to have a soul tie with someone in the general sense. We haven't got to breaking it down yet. It says, and David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them, if ye be come peacefully unto me to help me. Now, let me stop right there. You can tell what David was saying that he did not know them. He said, listen, if you're coming peacefully to help me, that, that lets you know that these were strangers. But look at what it says. It says, mine heart shall be knit. Y'all see that? Unto you. But if ye be come to betray me to mine enemies, seeing there is no wrong in me, uh, in mine hands, the, the God of our fathers, look thereon and rebuke it. So, so when we look at this, when we look at this, even with our brothers and sisters in Christ, there is some uh, soul ties, some knits that are made. Give me Colossians 2 and 2. I guess it would be a shame to leave out fellow church members, huh? Colossians 2 and 2. Look at it, what it says. It said that their hearts might be comforted. You see right here? Being knit together in love. That may explain why pastors... Uh, puts extra emphasis on loving one another. Extra emphasis. Because if we can't love one another in this place, then we can't, any stranger, that first-time visitor, how can we share love and show love to them if we don't love each other? And then how can we have a evangelistic campaign or outreach ministry if we're not people of love. 
So it says being knit together in love. That's what ties us together. Even though we live on di at different addresses. We drive differently. We live differently. We look differently. Some of us are male. Some of us are female. But we still are different. But what ties us together, some of us are younger, some of us are more seasoned. But what ties us together is that we have the love of God. And we have it for one another. There should not be anyone that can be in your company or in your presence and talk bad about your brother and sister in Christ. And, say and. I wanted y'all to say that, sounds so good. There shouldn't be anyone who can sit in your presence and talk bad about your pastor or first lady whom you have to receive spiritual giftings from. The word of God. When that day come, you're in the wrong church because you're not listening to nothing I'm saying. <laughs> so, so it says being knit together in love, in love, in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. See, when you have real love, then you can learn how to understand each other. You learn how to understand the differences that you may have with your brother, with your sister, with your friend, with your neighbor. Because it's love that gives you the patience to want to understand. And it's love that gives you the patience that when you speak, you speak to be understood. So it says, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father of Christ. Now, 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 so let me help you out here. Let me help you out. So now skip down to verse 19 in Colossians 2. Verse 19 in Colossians 2. It says, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered. Now, but look here. And knit together. There we go again. And tied together. Increase it with the increase of God. You want to know why perhaps you're not growing? Because you don't want to be tied with anybody in love. How can God give you increase? What, you, what would you do with it? If you were a hateful person and you were not uh, interested in being knit in love with anyone because everyone gets on your nerves... What would you do with increase if he gave it to you? <laughs> so, so now, now, knowing this, not only were the, they Christians, in other words, members of the bodies of Christ, but, uh, but, oh no, but they are brothers and sisters within the family of God. They are brothers and sisters within the family of God. And the scripture states that they are also individual members of each other. So yes, the person sitting next to you are important. They're important. And when they are missing, it should bother you because you are knit together in love. He said, but pastor, but I don't really know them. But it's funny how even if you don't know them because you haven't got to the point to fellowship with them on that particular level, you know their face. And when their face is missing, it does something to your heart. And that's all because of the love, the spirit of love that's on you to be knit together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Y'all there? Uh, Grab Rome, Romans 12 and 5. Is it okay if I teach y'all today? Because I got to work this thing up to where you understand uh, really good. So Romans 12 and 5. Look at what it says. So we, 
say that's us, <laughs> being many are one body in Christ. It sounded like what I was just saying, wasn't it? Now, and every, every one member, one of another, and every one members, one of another, and every one members, one of another. Give me the NIV version. Sound a little ebonical today. They like, what is pastor saying? So in Christ, we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. That's it right there, right? That's it, yeah. Boy, that made me want to get a piece of chicken. That's it right there. Now, now, now. So, <laughs> do y'all see that? So, so in Christ... We who are many form one body, mm. and each member belongs to all the others. So if that doesn't show that we are responsible, I don't know what does. We are responsible and to be concerned about one another. When somebody's absent, if you know their number, you should be calling them. Say, I missed you at the worship experience. Mm. Now, now, okay. Mm. So, now I need to show you this because Paul even further explains this powerful tie, if you will, or this knit in his letter to the church at Corinth. Can I teach you a little bit more? Is it okay? Now, look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 26. 1 Corinthians 12 and 26. Because I need to show you how, how deep this is. Okay. Give me the King James first. I'm going to try it one more time. It says, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored. All the members rejoice with it. Now, now let me have an NIV. Now, NIV version puts it like this. If one part suffer, see, I like King James better. I'm a little clear. Every part suffer or member suffer with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. That's why pastor says that we are to bear one another's burdens and bask in each other's blessings. So I'm not teaching something that's not in the Word of God. Now, listen, let me share this with you. I rarely, I rarely reference uh, in the he Hebrew or Greek. I rarely reference that because it's really kind of boring. If I stood up here and talked to you in all this Hebrew and Greek, you probably would be bored. And you probably wouldn't know what I was talking about. And so I rarely um, deal with Hebrew and Greek. Uh, because it kind of makes things look boring. So I use it to make a point. So I said that to say this. Even the Hebrew word companion speaks of people being knitted together. In the Hebrew, companion basically means people uh, being knitted together or an associate or a uh, fellow, but simply means being knitted together. Now, here's the key. Here's the key, and I'm almost finished with you. Here's the key. This knitting together can be good and godly companionship, or it can be, uh, it can be evil and ungodly companionship. Y'all want some of this? Okay, let me, let me give it to you. So now, give me Psalms 119.63. I got to help you and I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be out your way. Psalms 119.63, we, we talked about it could be good and godly companionship. Uh, it could be good and godly companionship. Psalms 119.63. Huh? 
You got, you, last week I had to grab one, so keep that handy. Your battery fully charged up? Oh, now, come on now. <laughs> now look, Psalms 119 and 63, it says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and them that keep thy precepts. You see that? So, uh, I am in fellowship uh, with all them that, that fear the Lord and that keep his precepts. It shouldn't be hard to be in fellowship with another believer. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? It doesn't matter that their place of worship is not at the same address as yours. What's important is that they have the, they follow the same precepts, the word of God, and they fear the Lord. I don't want to hang around someone who doesn't fear God. That's like, that's, that's like asking to be an accessory to the crime. Because the crime is going to take place. It's just, it's not a matter of if, it's when, when someone do not fear God. So, so now, now, let me, let me help you out. I didn't gave you the good one. Now, give me uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Now, I, I have a backup up here. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Because I just showed you what it is to be uh, knitted or have a good soul tie. What it is to have a good soul tie. Now, look right here. This is a bad soul tie. Or a bad knit. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Y'all see that? Now, let me show you this last one. Proverbs 28 and 24. You hang around people that have evil communication, it's going to change your good manners that you have. Eventually, one or two things going to happen. They're either going to become like you or you're going to become like them. And you'll discover whoever's doing the most talking, the other person's going to make the change. That's why when you come in church, the preacher, the pastor, the teacher do most of the talking. The congregation makes the change. They adjust to the word of God that he's talking about, she's talking about, what they're teaching. But if it was the other way around and you did most of the talking, then it would be chaos. Because no one would know what anyone is saying. So, 28, Proverbs 28, 24, it says, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. This is a bad soul tie. If you connect yourself uh, couple yourself up with someone who is a robber, who is a thief. Give me the amplified version. Give me the y'all just quit talking back there. Give me the amplified version. The amplified version says, "Whoever robs his father or his mother and says this is no sin, he is in the same class." as an open, lawless robber and a destroyer. That's a bad soul tie. So, so let, me, let me see something. Uh, let me get a, is it a married couple out there? Any married couples out there that, you know, that's close? Y'all, are y'all close? Okay, y'all come on down here. I want to show you something. They wanted to come down because they matching. Give me one. They mad. They got their brown on. They look like they about to go to Swope Park. <laughs> I, I want to show you something. Uh, we talked about. <laughs> they do. They look like they about to go cruise in the park. Face that way. Just stand on this. Yeah, stand on this. So one. And y'all, y'all hug each other like husband and wife do. That's how y'all do. Yeah, y'all young. Y'all, y'all get. Yeah, there y'all go. <laughs> Now, let me get my rope. I want to give you, show you how when it talks about being knitted 
together. He's gonna come around. Marvin, you need to lose a little weight, man. <laughs> so this is <laughs> when we're talking about being knitted together. It is God's, now this is just using a married couple. It is God's desire for the married couple to be this close. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Frequently, physically. Y'all caught that married people, right? If you're not visiting that department frequently, you got problems. So, this is being knitted together. When you are close and you are knitted, the reason why the scripture, because I'm showing you this, praise God, the reason why the scripture was saying stay away from those destroyers and the people that rob and thief and all that, because when you're this close together, you can literally feel each other's heartbeat. Can y'all feel your heartbeat? You said hers is racing. So... So you can literally feel each other's heartbeat. Now, it's a problem when you allow the enemy to come in and this start unraveling. Now, I need to show you this too. Uh, I need to show you this. Uh, uh, Kiara here. Kiara, is Kiara here? Come here, Kiara, real quick. She was up there doing the scripture. I'm sorry for getting on you. They was talking to you. She, she, she's a niece, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I don't want the enemy to get, get in, you know. I need to show you something. And, and I'm working in this because uh, now stand behind your uncle, you know, and just try to get as close to him as his wife. Put your hands on them. I know it don't, it don't feel right. Now, listen. Now, n- notice it's not meant to be like that. Let me help you. There's not enough knitting in the world to make you think that somebody else is supposed to be in your circle. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Because now, guess what? The person that is not supposed to be in the circle, really, according to the scripture, is the robber. And guess what that individual is coming to get? Him. Now, this is his niece for the sake of illustration. But if it wasn't his niece and there was someone who was just that close to him. See, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Notice he cannot give attention to both of them. Mm. Impossible. He, he's either got to pay attention to one or the other. And any time you start feeling something this close, then guess what? It will cause you to try to turn around. Try to turn around. And she has no choice to start letting him go. Go ahead. You, know, you the man. You try to turn around. You see how the difficulties you had to go through? It wasn't meant for that to take place. She, she like passing now. The, hugging them on the back part, that's fine. But, you know. So, so, God created. Go ahead. Get out. Care. Y'all can come back up. A couple. Y'all. Step on my little string. There you go. I'm fishing today. (laughs) God created this soul tie to be wrapped tight and healthy. (laughs) And since we were knitted together for fellowship, it causes us to have to face each other and to communicate. Now, I'm talking to the husband and wife now. There should be some communication going, some, some talking, some verbal talk. Y'all should be able to look each other in the eye. Can you look at me now? Okay. Look each other in the eye 
and have a conversation because that's what knits you even closer. my stream back. No, I ain't got no no, no consolation prize. (laughs) Now, do we have two uh, biological brothers in this house? That y'all brothers? Any two biological brothers? Okay. Come here. Y'all come here. Hurry up, Williams boys. They forgot they was brothers. Them were Williams boys. (laughs) And this is just for the sake of the illustration. Y'all all right, right? They like, I don't know what pastor going to do. Step on that. You, you got to look that way. But turn your body this way. Now, y'all fought before, right? Did your mom make y'all hug and, you know, make up, say, I'm sorry and all that? Okay, pretend y'all fought and just hug and hold it. There you go. Two hands, bro. Now, no padding. They trying to, they trying to make it as masculine as possible. They up here. Now, y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm illustration, man. Y'all props. This ain't real, you know. This ain't. Look, they don't even. I'm so glad that they don't even know how to hug in that spirit. Yeah, they like. They don't even know how to hug in that spirit. Just, just, just hug each other. As now, let me put it this way. Let me help y'all. They making this into a spiritual LD class. <laughs> now, look at each other. And I want y'all to, to put your hands around. This is just for the illustration. It's okay. We know y'all not funny. There you go. <laughs> now, now, just keep it like that. Keep it like that. He all ain't, he don't want nothing to touch. I like that. <laughs> Tell me we don't teach our men good. He like. <laughs> he don't want nothing to touch. Now. <laughs> yeah, keep it like that. Keep it like that. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, you know, you know when you are involved in something, hold that right there, that is not of God. Because number one, really the truth of the matter, if you tell the truth, you are uncomfortable with it. If it's not a soul tie that God placed the stamp of approval on, you're going to look stupid because he's, you're not comfortable with it in your soul, in your spirit, especially when you know the word and you know God is not pleased. I don't care how you done wrap yourself up in that relationship. You know it's not right. The word of God said it's not right and God knows it's not right. And this is how you look. You can put forth all the effort you want to try to make it work. But guess what? It'll never work because it's not what God intended. And in the meantime, between time, you're just like the scripture says. You're a robber and a thief. Because as long as, as this unnatural focus is your focus, then this is in your, your sight. Can y'all just look at each other one time? Okay, that's good. This is, this is what, no, no, y'all laugh. Come on, I ain't tell y'all laugh. This is what's in your sight. And long as this person is in your sight, occupying space, occupying time, then you can in no way say that I'm trying to be delivered. Were you blessed today? Amen. Praise